In this video, I want to give you a short explanation on the relationship between the AD curve, the aggregate demand curve, and the classical supply curve. Now just for a recap, the classical supply curve is a vertical supply curve that operates at full employment in an economy. Now I'll show you the diagrammatic relationship between the two curves. Now this is your output level. And this is your price level. And that's your y-axis and your x-axis. Okay, so now first we start to draw one of the two curves. I'll start with the classical supply curve, that is your long vertical line, your aggregate supply curve. And your, as usual, the downward sloping aggregate demand curve. And this would be operating at a price level of P1. Now the output, since it's a classical supply curve, will be operating at Y star, that is at your natural rate of unemployment. Or full employment. Meaning that there would be an unemployment of 4 to 5 percent, which is normal in an economy because some people are trying to, are maybe shifting jobs or trying to find jobs better for them, much more suited for them. So a small amount of unemployment would exist, and that's okay. That will be a full employment or a natural rate of unemployment. Okay, now. Consider an event taking place. Maybe there is a sudden increase in monetary supply, or maybe the government decided that there will be tax cuts implemented. Now, both these two situations have only one outcome, and that is an, a shift, a rightward shift of aggregate demand. That would be our 81. And that would become the new price for the new demand curve. All right. So now we can look at this um, from price one point of view. Now, initially from pri for price one, our output used to be Y star. That's the potential rate, the potential output. But now due to the shift of an aggregate demand curve, there's been an increase in demand. There's an increase in demand of why because at the same price you used to uh, you used to opt for y star but now since the demand has increased it you want more now you want more rate of output now this might seem good for us but for producers it's very hard for them as it's very expensive the cost of production the cost of production is very high because we're already operating at a full employment and a natural rate of unemployment and the producers to produce up to an output of y they would need to increase their cost of production as they need to give higher salaries to workers from workers that who are already working in well settled places they need to make them sh make sure that they have proper incentives for the workers to get an output of y so what happens is the cost of production would increase meaning the cost the salaries of the workers would increase which is a, which is you know difficult for the producers because they want things to be going as cheap as possible but no the cost of productions would increase the cost of this output to be produced would increase and this increase this increments will lead finally to to back to the original rate of output this increase the incremental shifts uh, the cost of production will lead us back to the original rate of output but at a higher rate of price so in this scenario the increase in demand the shift in demand does not lead to a higher output but rather it leads to uh, a higher price for the for the same for the output produced not more output, but the same output for higher price. That's what happens when the aggregate demand shifts to the right in a classical supply curve. 